Hey everybody, we uh, saw a post in the Antique Typewriters group on Facebook asking about the noiseless typewriter action, and so we thought we would show you that on my office machine here, but it also got us into a conversation about all the different kinds of different ways to get a type slug to hit a piece of paper on the platen, and that's an interesting topic to talk about itself. So here we've got a regular, regular noiseless typewriter. This is a number six that was factory refurbished, so that might be why it looks a little odd to you. That's right. Number six ought to have smooth paint on it, but... Right. Uh, this is all... This one's crinkle finished, and it's got different uh, key tops, and it says in the shift key, it says factory reconditioned at Remington Noiseless Factory, and that key top is orange. And then focus. <clears throat> and then the tab key is orange also. So this is a, a factory refurbished job. And the, these look really cool with the top off of them. You're almost tempted to leave them with the top off. You see a lot of these without the top because the top is Bakelite and they break. But here's the so-called noiseless action. And you notice I'm pressing the N key here. And you see the type slug moving forward. And that an act, that's actually a pair of type slugs. We'll talk about that in a second. But you notice that there's a weight back here. And as I press the key down... That's all the way down. That weight is up at the top here, and the slug is not on the paper. It is it is not contacting the platen with the key all the way down. Inertia would take it the rest of the way to the print point. See that? I just moved it forward. Now watch. It trips the escapement on inertia, not on the key. Inertia, that weight, moving forward, trips the bar that moves the, or trips the escapement, allows the carriage to move. Now the other interesting thing about these is that there aren't nearly enough levers for all the keys. So what you have is two different type slugs on one arm. And we'll use the same one again. We'll use N. If you look at these slugs, there's two sets of slugs on there. There's a lower one and an upper one. See that? It's kind of hard to see, see yeah, the lights ringing, but we can see it. Yeah, there's a, a lower one, so N is using the lower type slug for both lowercase and uppercase. Now watch, I'll push U, and it pulls the whole bar down and then allows it to go forward. See that? So I'll alternate between the two of these. There's N and U, N and U. So there's actually four characters on this lever, which is pretty cool. And, of course, if you try to press them both at the same time, it just locks because yeah, they, nothing that's, not, will happen. that's not possible. It won't, it won't work. But that's, a, that's the way this works, and that's why it's so quiet because what is stopping this key travel and the type of slug travel is not a physical piece of metal striking another piece of metal. They bottom out on a pad, and inertia carries it the rest of the way to the print point. In literature, they talk about it pressing the type slug against the platen with pressure rather than velocity, which is, you know, that's totally misused, but right. that, you know, that's what they say. But that is that explains why it's so quiet. You know, all you can hear is mechanical action. Yep. Big difference in sound. Yeah, we've got that Underwood uh, noiseless ad somewhere that shows a uh, theoretical executive in his office with secretaries on both sides of him with typewriters. Right. You know, the idea that if you if you were busy enough, you needed two stenographers, you could actually have two right beside you and still get your yep. work done. And these machines, interestingly, especially with the key tension set properly, are fairly tolerant of bottom typing, which might be another plus for certain people. But because of this weight, you can really type fast on this if you don't bottom type. Yep. You give it enough velocity... And uh, you don't need to follow the key all the way down. So you can really, if you've got strong fingers and good technique, with this set all the way on, on stiff, you can really blaze on a noiseless. Right. Now, of course, if we, if we step all the way back from this thing and classify it, although it's heavily modified, it's still, it's still essentially a thrust action mechanism, right. where, which is to say that the, the, the type slugs thrust at the platen instead of coming down and hitting it, you know, like a... Tomahawk chop. Right, instead of swinging up from somewhere, being at rest back here. Right. Or underneath. Right, or underneath. They're essentially moving straight forward and backward. And you could, you know, 
other than having an extra component to get four characters on a slug, it is a thrust action machine. That's right. Now, if we go back all the way to the earliest iteration of uh, thrust action, the original Wellington Parker Kidder patent, and we're going to take a little walk here. <laughs> we're going to walk over here. We'll find that it starts with this, or something <laughs> like this. This is a Blick Universal. It's really an Adler, relabeled for sale in England through Blick uh, Typewriter Company. And this is a little three-bank thrust action portable. So, Dave, if you lift that cover, I've got the two thumb screws off of it. We'll see, yep, a whole bunch of type bars arranged radial to the print point. Yep. And if I press one, it just goes right, right in very Straight smoothly yep. on, a, on a very smooth chromed surface. This only has... Uh, this action straight in for these. There is no, uh, there's no up down motion on this machine. I'll show you in a second because it's carriage shifted. Right, so if I come at the side here, let's see if I can get the side here and look inside, I can see all I have to do is get motion to move that type bar horizontally and it slides right in. And it really accelerates as you get the yep. key down towards. Towards the bottom. And this this is double shift. There's a shift. There's the other shift. Both, Figured capital. Yeah, both shifts Figured. are down on this machine. Right. So that's... that's thrust action free bank. Yeah, that's, and that's the original <laughs> iteration of thrust action uh, typewriter and it's in its simplest form. Now we've got a couple of others that are kind of in between. Yeah, these are just... not thrust action, and they're certainly not like any other, you know, front striking machine. Uh, the one on the left is obviously a noiseless variant, mm -hmm. and the one on the right uh, falls into a nebulous zone. <laughs> so if we if we look at the action of the one on the left here, we'll just take a push a key down. You see it? There's kind of a scissor action. You see, look how far down the uh, the tight bars are, are pivoting. Way Essentially down standing there. up, yeah, and it's pushing it in. And if we were able to look down inside there, which is really hard to see, we'd see that there is a weight attached there yep. that will follow it to the re the rest of the way to the uh, print point. Right, kind of like the kind of yeah. like the and uh, shove it in, yeah. Noiseful standard, except this will bottom out with the with the key. That's right, almost all the way forward. Yeah, see? see that action. Is what is what prints right there, but right. it trips the escapement just before that happens. Before yep. and then, the rest of that motion to the print point is all on inertia with the weight that's underneath. Not exactly the same as the standard, but the same idea. And notice, listen, very quiet, very very quiet, very quiet. Because again, you're not you're not having metal strike metal to stop the the uh, type arm the coming forward. All you hear is a slight clack from the platinum. These are really quiet for portables. Yeah. Now the mutant is these. These are referred to as their quiet mechanism or speed mechanism. Look, you can hear that. This this is essentially the same thing, but there's no weight on there. There is no weight on the mechanism on this typewriter. Bottom. Yep. Yep. But it still it still requires inertia yep. to get to get forward. But it is it's a different feeling. And look, it it bounds and rebounds off of the off of the platen. Yep. And, and that sound you hear is the type slug physically being stopped by the platen. Yep. This machine is a little bit of a mutant. The serial number on this machine is PT0034. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's like some of the ones that say Remington ran model one with it spelled out O-N-E and there's others that just have a one and this one's really early. PT prototype? Yeah, well, that's that's what was told to me when I first got it by people in a position to know. So, so anyway, there's a there's a look at some thrust action, a couple of thrust action typewriters, and uh, a couple of uh, that are in between. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, just a couple of site website housekeeping notes. We do have the second part on uh, Orga typewriters coming up pretty soon. Uh, I'll be driving out today or tomorrow. Maybe maybe Friday 
to pick up a typewriter we got that's pretty hard to find, which you'll be seeing pretty soon. Wow. Some of you will be really excited, and some of you will be just what? bored senseless bored by this. Tears, yeah, right? you'll say, that's an unusual typewriter, and I'll say yes. Just remember, this isn't costing anything, so... That's right, that's right. If you want to see better typewriters, then you start sending in Send some... Send us money. Yeah. <laughs> Now, we're not asking for money. We're actually just kidding with that. That's or typewriters. A joke. Yeah. You can send us free typewriters. We, yes. Now, free typewriters dropped off on the doorstep would be... We're not kidding about that one. Yeah. So, anyway, those are uh, just a couple housekeeping notes. And uh, so, this is our, our weekly video, the second one we've done. Uh, we'll be looking for your comments and questions to do another one. We did not do one, by the way, during the week I was in Anaheim for the uh, ANS meeting. So, we skipped there. So, uh, anyway, we'll be watching through the website and through Facebook for your further comments. See you again soon.